the home of jump racing. This is where the magic happens. Feel like a Cheltenham favourite with Paddy Power. Hello everyone and welcome to another on the road edition of Road to Cheltenham. We're here live from Leopardstown ahead of the fourth day of their Christmas festival meeting. We'll be previewing their two grade ones later on in the show. We'll also be looking back at the first three days of excellent action from here and also taking in what's been going on at Kempton, at Limerick and elsewhere around the country in Britain and Ireland. It's going to be a packed hour and I'm delighted to say that we've assembled a top team. As ever, my co-presenter Ruby Walsh is with me. Hello. But I'm also delighted to say that we have got Lisa O'Neill and Jane Mangan on board for what should be a fun packed show. I'm going to kick straight into it because we've got loads to get through. Let's start with the Jack de Bromhead Christmas hurdle. What happened here yesterday and your take on it, really? Yeah, that's, that's a good place to, to start. What happened here yesterday with three false starts and Florian Porter didn't run away. So to me, before the race started, you're thinking, whoa, is he alive? Is he going as well as he can do? And to me, when he got to the second last hurdle, first time round, he wasn't travelling with the gust over zest. I expected him to be going with. I did think JJ Stephan gave home by the league a great right. He gets up to Danny Mullins going to the third last hurdle and applied the pressure to Florian Porter. He didn't let Danny slow it down and dictate it. He kept the pressure on at home by the league, who travelled much better than he did in the Liz Mullen. And I think in the end, he's the strongest there. He runs out a good winner. winner. He beats Ashdale Bob, who comes between them here off the home turn. Meet and greet, runs a good race and runs on to eventually be third. All right, Danny misjudged the winning post, so he would have been fourth. And then you had Bob Ollinger, who to me didn't stay. Lisa, what was your take? They've made home by the lead favourite for the stayers heard on now. Is that how you see things? I think you have to appreciate what he'd done here yesterday. I thought JJ7, as Ruby said, gave him a lovely ride. As we've seen so many times before, we've seen Danny Mullins and he stacks them up in, in the stairs here at Cheltenham. But JJ didn't allow that to happen. He kept his horse out wide, kept the momentum going, and you, ha you have to give him the respect that he earned here yesterday. I thought he was a surprise winner at Liz Mullen Hurl. I thought he was a bit of a surprise winner here yesterday, but maybe we just haven't given him the credit he deserves. Me has the switch to tactics, him circling the outside of the field helped him? Because they were talking about him being on the inside and losing his position and not being able to rally in the stayers last year. Yeah, and I think JJ made that decision halfway through the list, Mullen, that he was being claustrophobic, switched him out. But he still doesn't travel terribly well through the middle of a race regardless. He lacks tactical pace for a track that is, like Cheltenham, is so tight. Um, Ruby will know better and the, the undulations that are encompassing the, the, the actual stairs test. But I wonder on quicker ground if we do get that in March, if he's going to be taken completely out of his comfort zone and could find himself in a position where you can't win from. Mm -hmm. I'd agree with the Flooring Porter sentiment. Uh, watching the race, as a big fan of his, I wasn't terribly comfortable. Danny wasn't exactly fighting him at any stage. You know the way he stacks him up, leaving the back straight. There was none of that. It was all very straightforward for Danny. And usually when he's on song, he's aggressive. He wasn't aggressive yesterday. And I have to say, Bob Ollinger, he was ridden to come home and he couldn't even get involved. He was no. the disappointment of the race. Yeah, Bob Ollinger, what to do with him now, Lisa? Yeah, it's very questionable. You could see, I think, from four out yesterday that Rachel wasn't comfortable. Normally, he travels into a race so hard on the bridle, but yesterday, Rachel's hands were dropped on his neck. She was kind of, her body language was displaying that she was urging him along a little bit, so he was not comfortable by any means. And from four out, the writing was on the wall. I'm not sure where he'll go next. Some people might say drop-in trip. Potentially, possibly so. We've seen him run out so hard to the line in the Ballymore when he did win that, so maybe that's the way to go with him, but I think he faces strong opposition in that field. Well, <laughs> absolutely, we'll be getting on to that later. Uh, Flooring Porter, like, like Jane, I felt the ride was a little bit conservative. It, it wasn't the sort of, it, it wasn't the usual way of, uh, free way of riding Flooring Porter. Well, Flooring Porter usually sort of rides himself, and he mm. did run away last year at entry when he got running with Danny past the winning post, and ultimately that cost him the race when Sarah de Burley beat him. To me, yesterday, it wasn't he was ridden conservatively, is that the horse was conservative. Mm. I thought the horse looked lethargic. And not lethargic is the wrong word. That same fight or bit of madness that he had wasn't there. Will it come back? Who knows? Who knows? There's only so long horses run at that level. It, 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 Big Buck's been the exception, all right? English Trevor won three Barracuda, but three mile hurdling is a sapping division on horses. And look, he's been at the top. Hopefully he can come back to the top, but. I don't know, the jury would be out. At home by the lead, Jane was making, wondering maybe about the track or being too tight for him. I would say the old course most definitely would be, but not the new course. English Driever, big bucks would often be behind the bridle. Stairs on the new course, 
that you'd lost the way. I, I love them to see them, that you're half niggling to the top of the hill and you can wind them up from their home. So is it fair to say then, home by the lead, just for me, without being disrespectful to the horse, isn't vintage? Mm -hmm. So could you say, Lucinda Russell might be thinking, do you know, I might actually be able to win a stairs herd with a with horse. With a horse in is that, it, it just doesn't look like a terribly deep renewal. You've got the dual champion now beaten twice this year and there's excuses for a lot of these horses and I'm not thinking it's going to be a terribly hard race to win. I think that's an interesting shout, particularly how a horse and you ran in the King George. We could go on some other left field ones as well. I do think it's wide open at the moment. Let's take a look at the long walk, Ruby, yeah, and the feel-good win from Faisley Park. Yeah, it was, but again, I don't think you saw the same champ at Kempton that you did at Newbury. He lined up to go in front, Goshen sat in behind him, not so sleepy outside of Miranda and Paisley Park. But champ didn't go the same gallop he went at Newbury, and he didn't have the same gusto to go the same gallop. But like Florian Porter, the, the, the spirit, the, the, the want to go wasn't there. He was adjusting left a lot, wasn't he? He was adjusting a bit to his left floor, and Paisley Park, he was he warmed up better and jumped better than he did at Newbury and when they got into the home straight look Champ keeps on to come to his left here and John Josh should have put his whip in his left hand that was a, a miss by him didn't cost him the race but it's not great right and he was brilliant on him at Newbury he should have his whip in his left hand here at Kempton but Paisley Park wears them down Goshen look I suggested that a long time ago he should go three, up to three miles and it's a bit like what you do with Bob Bollinger you have to go back to two because eventually you run out of options what else do you do? Goshen just didn't get home, but Paisley Park outstayed them. But I'm not sure the pace, the, the speed, everything wasn't there in Champion. He could just be a best horse fresh. He fades and eventually runs again when he gets to this side. But it was great to see Paisley Park come back and win. And when you look back on it, two good jumps at Newbury, you might see him unbeaten this year. Lisa, Paisley Park seems to be very much in the mood again this season, but he's, this will be his fifth stay as hurdle. Can we really realistically see him winning it? Yeah, he is getting older, as, as we see with a few of these in this division as well, but he's also, I think he's a lot, he obviously is a lot better this year than he was last year. I'm not sure the jury was out a little bit with him last year, and he can be a little bit uh, unpredictable at the start sometimes yeah. as well, but he's, what we've seen of him this year, you can't really fault him. I thought he was very good the other day, and uh, obviously Aidan Coleman gets on really well with him, but as Ruby said, they probably didn't go as hard up front, but he's seen it out really well. In an open year, Jane, is he, should we be thinking that he is a player again? He is a player. He's rising 11, but because he's been so conservative, minding himself all his career, <laughs> that does owe to longevity. We saw it with big bucks, so I, I, I wouldn't rule him out. The way that he was able to lie up and stay in touch without coming off the bridle early like he usually does in that race suggests the pace that Ruby was mentioning, but um, look, he's as good as what's around in England, I think. Champ went into last year's stairs hurdle in better form than Paisley Park. Paisley Park still beat him. Can we see Champ as being a realistic winner? Oh, I don't think so, to be honest. I, I, I wasn't sure like what, what we've seen him. I thought he was kind of treading water as he jumped the last the other day. And I've been a little bit, little bit reserved. My um, bit jury's out a little bit with him, to be fair. But I, I'd all be about Paisley Park, really, I think, holding that level of form up. Left field, then. Maxim yesterday. We all think he's heading towards the pit temps after that qualifier win. Up £17, wins again as he likes. Might he end up in the stayers, actually? It's questionable. He's going to go. He's going to get a rating that's going to be equivalent to a graded horse. So he has every right to potentially line up there. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the handicapper does give him. He was oh so impressive yesterday, justifying that £17 weight rise on different grounds as well. But I've loved him since he came to Gordon Elliott. He's a lovely horse. He's a great attitude, and he just showed yesterday he's got uh, the ability to match that attitude that he has given a lovely ride by Jack Kennedy, but the world is his oyster at the mm. moment, I think, and he's got plenty of options, but you can't disregard the fact if he did turn up into something like the stairs. Well, we've said it's wide open. Maxim, how do you like those apples? He's 120, he's probably going to get a 17 or 18 pound rise again. That still leaves him with a lot to find. He's five rising six. I'd say be in no panic. Take your handicap and then you can go next year if you want. And you? Back to Champ. I think Champ is, is made for entry. That's where I'd be going with him. Mm -hmm. And Maxim was 120 in Ireland yesterday. That's probably 130 in the UK, 132. Plus the 20 he's going to get. He's going to be somewhere in the mid-150s in the UK. That's what he's going to have to carry in the per temps. I think he'd be up close to 160 in an English rate. Before we move on to the two milers, does anyone have any other shouts for staying hurdlers that might arrive from left field? Not just yet. I thought a high senior was an interesting one. Already. It is a good one. There's probably a couple of Irish novice chasers yet to go fencing, so we'll, we'll wait and see how that goes. <laughs> <Yeah. was. laughs> 
exactly. There could be some late switches as of January and February. We might learn about those. Right, OK, we're going to move on to the two-mile hurdlers. And the obvious place to start is Constitution Hill and his win in the Christmas hurdle at Kempton. Yeah, and it was brilliant. And it's exactly what you expect the Constitution Hill to do, or what we now expect Constitution Hill to do. He got a lead, Highway 102, went along, he settled well. I did think maybe he carried his head a fraction to the right and did go a bit to his right, but that's trying to pick hole in something that is pretty much faultless. I mean, he, he's, he's rock solid. He's, his mentality, his way of going, his way of jumping. Nico keeps it very simple on him. He's a brilliant, brilliant racehorse, and he's by far the best horse in this division at the moment. And he gets, the second, gets in tight to the second last, but I don't mind that. He didn't guess and throw himself at it. He just kicked the top bar off, and away he goes. He's a, he's a brilliant racehorse. When you mention how he's holding his head, what's that making you think? I don't know. Does he just want to go to his right? Could he be an even better horse going right-handed? Nico kept him out in the middle of the track. He might just be fractionally better going right-handed, but his ability going left-handed is more than good enough. But isn't that an issue, then, if you're just talking about the tightness of the, of the old course at Cheltenham? You watched them down the hill last year in the Supreme. He does go right at the third last and at the second last, but it's only fractions and fractions. I mean, you have as much in hand as he has. You give away all those fractions. Lisa, how impressed are you by him? Very impressed. You can't really fault much what he's done, but I do agree with Ruth. He was going a little bit to his right. We have seen him do that previously, but he's also good. And I really can't fault anything that he's done. And he really franked himself again the other day. Epiton sat in behind and had a target on his back the whole way, but just isn't good enough. I think he idled maybe going down to the second last. Mm. But um, that just shows what, how much he has in reserves. Um, Nico was confident on him, knew what he had underneath him as well. And I was very impressed by him. Jane, you're the chair of the Honeysuckle Fan Club. How are you feeling as you're watching Constitution Hill season? I was listening to all the crap that was being spoken all summer about this guy, and I was not not buying it. I was waiting out till the autumn, and da, da, da. <laughs> the hands grace happens, and then he's two runs this year, and I, in the month of December, probably in November, accepted the fate that this guy is a monster, and nothing nor nobody is going to land a glove on him. So I have accepted. So. Obviously, it depends to a large degree on the Irish champion hurdle, but what should Connections do with Honeysuckle? She should still run in the champion hurdle. Absolutely. Um, Peter Maloney had an interesting interview on the TDN last week where he said if she's not going well enough to run the champion hurdle, so if she's not in herself going well enough to run the champion hurdle, that they would consider the mayor's hurdle, they would more likely consider retirement. Yes. And I think that is a very wise way of looking at it. Because mm. She doesn't deserve to run if she's not 100% herself, to give 100% of what we've seen from her. If 100% of herself probably isn't good enough to be Constitution Hill in a realistic world, but she could go out in her shield, and why not? Yes. Uh, she's been a champion, and she, she'll gain nothing. And I know the currency of sport is win. But what will she win? What will she get from winning a mayor's hurdle? Nothing. <laughs> no, it would, be, it would be ashen, wouldn't it, after having won two champion hurdles? Lisa, what would you do with Epitant? Would you have another bash at the champion hurdle, or would you go to the mayor's? I think why not? Why not go to the mayor's? I I would think personally, but um, she's obviously been there to champion hurdles. She's done it before. She could take her chance in that either, but realistically, I mean, if you're going to come up against Constitution Hill again, I mean, you've been beaten twice already, so um, I would go back to the mares personally. I, I think I agree with Jane. I'd send Honeysuckle to the champion hurl. She's the reigning champion. She holds that title, so I don't think why she should step down. Obviously, it's a big threat with, champ with Constitution Hill, but you have to take that chance too. Yeah. Listen to the sense here being talked about Honeysuckle. Oh, here's the, the Grinch. Targets. Now go on. <laughs> Winning matters. <laughs> Yeah, it does, but Epitant would the Epitant's decision will hinge on Honeysuckle. And if Honeysuckle runs in the champion, I think Epitant will run in the mares. And if Honeysuckle doesn't show up, I would think Epitant will run in the champion because at the end of the day, if you're standing in the parade ring waiting for the mayor's hurdle and Constitution Hill falls at the second, no one has taken them on. Yeah. Mm. So that's what it lit then for Epitant, she is behind. Only suckle. She's probably going to end up behind statement. So you're, you're weighing up the options. To me, that's why you leave a decision late. Can you see what's running, what's taking on Constitution Hill, and then you decide what to do with it. Is she definitely behind her over two and a half miles? Behind Honeysuckle? Yeah. Yeah. Jane, are you going to take yeah. that? I just no, felt she was I, unexp she's exposed over two and a half miles, Epitone, now. That was a career best of the I entry I think she's hurdle. best over two and a half miles, mm. personally. I think she entries her place. Mm. Um, she's a great mare, but Honeysuckle's better. She's consistently been better all her career. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs>
Um, right, we also have a key piece for the puzzle today, don't we, in the Matheson hurdle, Ruby. How are you seeing this lining up? Oh, I think she's Alexa can go along. I mean, often you don't get an out and out, excuse me, an out and out front runner in races like these, but she's electric, likes to jump and go. So she's a nice addition to the race for the guy, people that are riding in it. So she'll book out and go. And then I think it'll shape up pretty much like the Morgiana did. Except instead of having Sally out, you'll have she's electric. Stateman will follow the one in front. Patrick will probably try and cover Paul Townend. And then the others will sit behind. But well, I think Pipe Piper will sit behind or somewhere there. And Vauban will drop in. That's the way I see it playing out. Um, and it'll be. Jack, Patrick and Danny keeping an eye on Paul Townend. How much are we expecting from Vauban today? I think Vauban will improve considerably. He's only four, a bit like Pied Piper, rising five. I think by the Dublin Racing Festival they'll both be better horses. By Cheltenham and Mickers they'll but both have improved again. But we're still the wrong side of Christmas for these juveniles and I think uh, they won't be able to cope with the older horses yet. Jane, They're how not do you juveniles see? anymore, sorry, four-year-olds. Yeah. But they'll yeah. be better horses than five year olds. Jane, how do you see the relative competitors here in the Matheson? Um, look, it is what it is. It's not terribly deep race. Sharda is the place we should start because he's chasing history with five in a row and he loves the place um, and Patrick loves riding him here. State man isn't exactly a shoe in because mm -hmm. if Patrick sits on his tail turning in and it's a game of turn of foot, Sharjah has an electric turn of mm -hmm. foot. Mm -hmm. uh, ground is probably a little worry for him because it's, a, it's slow here, it's riding slow. Um, I don't know how long she is electric is going to be able to lead them, so Paul's probably going to have to take initiative at some stage, knowing how well he, he'll know um, Sharjah. Uh, Vauban, he, I have to tip my hat to Gordon Elliott. He's won two races with Mike yeah. Piper, in, yeah. including the WKD at Down Royal already this year, with a horse the same age as Vauban. So I have to tip my hat to him. Maybe Vauban will beat him at Cheltenham, but Caldwell Construction have already had two days in the winner's enclosure, so he's, he's a flat red horse, he also has a game of pace, but he needs to improve if he's going to be champion hurdle standard. I think he's overpriced compared to Vauban, there's less than three lengths between them in the triumph hurdle, I agree, he, Vauban might well beat him at Cheltenham, but here today he's the fifth horse, he's the proven horse, I think he's going to run well isn't he? Yeah, I think he will, like, like Pied Piper, he's matured with age as well. Um, he's in really good form at home. We just have to make up ground, obviously, with Vauban as well. But it's an intriguing race, and I think this will tell us a lot where to go with Pied Piper as well. Um, you know, if he's if he's capable of taking on that kind of division, uh, a lot will tell today. But I think uh, with regards to Sharjah, it's the deepest race. Um, I know he's great around here, but it's the deepest race he's faced in a long, long time. Um, it's about four years ago since he faced opposition that was rated above him. Mm -hmm. uh, State man is that today, and he faces that. So it'll be interesting to see how he does pan out but obviously I'd imagine Patrick will try and stay wide with him try and get the best in the freshest of ground he can but um, yeah it'll be an intriguing contest but um, I love I like what, Char what uh, sorry Stateman done the last day and I think he's, he's potential. Yeah he's just got to improve his jumping slightly hasn't basically, he? Basically if Stateman doesn't beat Charge and win today then he's an also ran in March. Absolutely yeah, yeah. it's he, he must win and he must win win stylish well, yeah. I think. Right, so those are the hurdlers, the open race hurdlers. We're going to move on to the novice hurdlers and have a look at Fasal Vega, the horse whose reputation precedes him. What did you make of his second start ever hurdles? It didn't blow me away. Um, but look, he let a top point to the front of first, jams on, goes out to his right. Fasal Vega wings through and he's inside, and that just lights him up. And he bolts with Paul Townend from there on. Um, you know, has a good grab at the first down the back. Not a good grab, but that was the first sign that he has a grab in him. And when he gets to the second last, he does step. Paul goes to shorten him and he comes out of his hands. But look, he lengthened and stayed. He didn't open up and sprint, but he did lengthen and stay. And he had done things back to front, the way he raced. You can see Ash Diamond is starting to run on back in third, having never been in the contest. But I thought on the whole, Fasal Viga jumped fine. And I thought he looked plenty big in the ring. I think Willie had him just about where he wanted him for Christmas, and I think there's plenty to improve it. This was a better performance on the clock than his debut. It was still a bit of a procession. There's some rawness about him still, don't you think, in terms of how he races and jumps? Yeah, I agree. I think that's a good thing too, because I think there is improvement to come, and as Ruby said, you'd imagine that's going to happen too, obviously with his jumping, but also he needs to settle too. Um, we also seen, if he goes for the Supreme, we seen last year Dice at Dynamo, if something took him on at the front, you know, he was going to go like his tail was on fire. <laughs> if something takes on Fasal Vega at the front, are we going to see something, if, if, he, if he does take himself to the front and something takes him on, he's going to, he's going to over race again but that's um, 
you know, I thought there's definitely loads of improvements come from his run the other day. It's only his second start over hurls. I think what we've seen on his maiden hurl in Fairy House, we expected him to blow everyone away like he did in Fairy House. But this is grade one opposition. Violette mm -hmm. Tomp is no forlorn hope either. So, I mean, she is a highly rated mayor in her own right. So I thought it was, it was a good, uh, it wasn't overwhelming by any means. Even money for the Supreme? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I have a lot of respect for Jeff Howard. I think myself and a lot of people here were a little bit deflated, not deflated, but underwhelmed by his performance. But he's probably going to learn a lot more from making those two mistakes to this week rather than going acing this round and then getting a, a higher tempo race and getting challenged at Cheltenham and then making the mistake. We're better yes. off to do it here. Um, uh, we're also, as Irish crowd we were hoping to have something to take on constitution hill <laughs> even though we just won a maiden hurdle um, <laughs> so there's a there's a bit of an element of that we just had to remember oh yeah he's he's actually a novice and if he hadn't ran in the bumper last year in Cheltenham I'd be concerned about the preliminaries for him he mm. was quite on his toes mm. and he was two handlers and he was on the steel in the ring and you saw the way he ran so there's Probably just a little bit more mental maturity as well as physical development. But you know that side on camera angle you have here at Leopard Sand that's just really cool. You can really appreciate the length of his stride. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it'll be interesting what distance he goes up in, in future, whether he's a real two miler or he goes further. But I, I was impressed. What more can we expect? The horse in second has loads of experience. He's got a rating of 137. He maybe ran beyond that. Uh, in this race, but this, you know, Fasel Vega, the dream is still alive. Mm, I think Ashray Diamond probably should have finished second myself, but you know, that's for another day. Uh, high definition, what do you think of, of his performance, his debut over hurdles? I was pleased with it. He's jumping, obviously, there's plenty to work on for that, for, with that, but this is the first hurdle he ducks off out to his right, and again at the first hurdle in the back straight, which was number three, but normally would be number four. Again, he jams on and heads off out to his right as well and takes Jessica Anker's runner with him, but you'd have to like the way he kept that in and how he opened up. So, and on the clock, there was three two-mile races on Monday here at Leopardstown. The first three races were two-mile hurdle races. This was by a long way the quickest of yep. the three of them. Um, it was seven seconds quicker than Dark Raven in the next maiden hurdle, which was five rolls and upwards. And it was five seconds quicker than Lossie Mouth in the juvenile hurdle, even though it doesn't look like it here because the finish was quite slow. Um, but I thought it was a good, good performance. His jumping will improve. We know he's a high-class flat horse. And um, great start. Do you like him? Do you have some others that you like in this division? Which, which horses are you thinking about, as well as Fasal Vega? It's not his fault that I actually didn't end up liking him as a flat horse, because he was given this reputation that he couldn't maintain. Everyone felt like that. Uh, so much. <laughs> like he wins a Barris where he's overnight favourite or over the winter favourite for the Derby, and then he just looks a little bit slow, and then Aidan O'Brien runs him over 10 furlongs, and then he nearly proves us all wrong by getting beaten a neck in a 10 furlong group one, and we all thought he was a stare. But he proved he can jump. He'll be better with a lead. Uh, he was 119 on the flat. He will be a very good hurdler, but he's not a juvenile. He's going to head in against Jetport, uh, powered against Facile Vega, and that's going to be really hard. Do they go straight into grade one company next time? Do they go straight to Chelham? He'll definitely need more jumping experience. We've had a couple of um, very impressive maiden winners recently, and Impere Pass, yeah. Ruby might tell us a little bit more. I was very impressed with him at Nace. Uh, Marine Nacional and Irish Point, the two from the Royal Bond, of obvious interest, and um, In the Pocket and Gaelic Warrior, like, sure, they could be anything. So there's so much talent in this division that we're yet to really unleash. Lisa, any others to add? Uh, I agree with Jane, obviously. Gaelic Warrior, he, he uh, was so good in Tremor, but he had to be good because the opposition was much inferior to what he was, but um, he was well touted for um, the Boodles last year and he's got a big shout I think a high definition to me I think he potentially could even step up in trip I thought the further he was going he hit the line really well thought JJ7 was just going through the motions and I think the further he goes the better he could go he could potentially even end up in maybe a Ballymore possibly um, but yeah it's a strong division um, and there's so many to like about it obviously Marine National as well I was very impressed by what he did um, he kind of came in under the radar a little bit uh, with some of the maybe bigger stables having horses with big profiles coming into it but he proved that he's really good and uh, yeah it'd be interesting to see but it's a strong division okay 
loads and loads of strong horses from the Irish side of things. I'm just going to throw in one British horse that went under a double penalty, the opening race at Kempton on Boxing Day, rare edition. Comparatively with Constitution Hill, it wasn't as good a time performance, but it wasn't as lesser as you might have thought it was going to be, both sectionally and overall. I think he's a really decent prospect, rare edition, and could well go slightly under the radar because so much is happening over these four days. Yeah, but he was really impressive at Doncaster when he won it. We highlighted him a few weeks ago. Um, and it's fun, interesting, he was second in a point of point. At, I, thought, I thought it was Cove when I was reading the, the shorthand. It's now Cove, was Corbar, Corbar or somewhere. Um, but he cost 450,000 when he was second. The horse that beat him, Kalanisi Star, cost 65,000. That was a misprint by the Racing Post. He cost 45. 45? Yeah, they added on a zero. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at it. I, was thinking, I went and looked it up. <laughs> Thank God it's a mystery, but I would do, that's where I did Big my homework. Big difference to I zero, better, makes. shouldn't I? <laughs> right, OK, let's move on to the juveniles, shall we? And Lossie Mouth. Lossie Mouth has won again, and she did so impressively. But both races so far have been relative speed tests, haven't they? I think they have. Watch this race here, away from the second hurdle of Leopardstown. And if you look behind her, how many horses were quite keen. Um, they went steadily, and by the time they get her over to the third last hurdle, they're still keen. Nose Reds tanking with Daryl Jacob up on the outside. They did go steadily enough. Now, they do finish quick, and she does open up, in fairness to her, when she jumps to second last and puts a good bit of distance between herself and Gallimard. So, the big disappointment was Cougar. He failed and trotted. Nosre kept going to be third. War correspondent is back and forth. What can she do? Only win the race she's running in. And she is doing it, and doing it impressively. She's a really slick jumper. She's got a good turn of foot. And I think she deserves to be favoured for the triumph. Does she deserve to be quite as short as she is? That I'm not sure, but anti-post markets, everything seems to be short in them at the moment for, for whatever reason. Lisa, I suppose my point is that it, the Triumph is a real test of stamina for, for juveniles, and she's six to four favour for it, and that so far we haven't seen her stamina credentials. No, and even in Leopardstown, as Ruby said the other day, they did go slow. You could see everyone was keen, but she quicken, she did quicken away from them, suggesting that it was a slow pace. So it'll... Uh, I know in Fairy House I was impressed with her when she beats Eric the Brave as well. I thought that was really good, but I didn't think they went that fast in it either. So I agree we haven't seen that yet of her and she's yet to prove that. She's probably short enough in the betting for my liking, mm. but she's the best juvenile we've seen in Ireland this year so far. I think Cougar was really disappointing, I thought, as well, and I thought he shaped with a lot of promise in Down Royal, and I thought he put in a better display than he did in Leopardstown the other day, so he's yet to step forward, but she tops the mark for me, but she's yet to prove herself, and she's quite short. Any other juveniles that you've liked? Um, if you were looking to go back into the handicap division, the Boodles, I actually thought Goody Two Shoes the other day. I thought that was a good performance. Yeah. And could we see her maybe following the footsteps of Brazil, going to Punchestown maybe, and, and then on to the likes of Cheltenham for the Boodles? I'm not too sure, but I liked what I seen the other day. Is that the sweeping move that she made? Is it behind Takeo? Is that the, the That's, race? Yeah. Uh, Willie Mullins, Takeo, yes. And she, she came up on the outside, made a bad mistake at the last. Simon Torrance was on board. He was lucky to stay on board. But I just thought for her debut effort over her, there was lots of potential to come from it. And uh, I just thought maybe it's the same, same path that might be plotted the likes of Brazil last year, so one to keep an eye on, I think. Jane, what's your take on Lossie Mouth and any other juveniles that's taken your eye? Yeah, Lossie Mouth can't do any more than she's done. Uh, I like the mare, she's by the same sire as uh, Benny De Joe, and she's got a big physical, she's got a bit of presence about her, so it's so far so good for her, there'll be more to come out. I like Blood Destiny, what we saw from him in Cork, he was keen, did a couple of things wrong, he was still very impressive, what he beat remains to be seen. Uh, Takeo the other day was impressive, and Gallimar so for her first run for the yard, I thought, uh, in behind there. We've seen two good mares placed there. Um, mm. Jatara behind high, de high definition. Mares Novice is another race to tell them. Let's, let's not forget all those mares races. Uh, so we've got two uh, other options there. So look, for me, the Triumph Division isn't one I terribly get excited about, but the, the mare can't do any more she's done. Okay. Those are our thoughts on the hurdlers. When you rejoin us, we'll be talking about the chasers. Hello and welcome to another of our racing quizzes. Are you for real? Like that's yeah, it. Exactly. If you'll hold your horses. Oh my God! It's right. Some stage today. Nobody's listening. Eighty-four. Good old Frank. You're away. You're you watching, Dave? Oh. It took about half an hour. Oh. Incorrect. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the ice. Three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know your audience. So she actually gave a wrong clue, and they got the wrong answer. I know. I know.
We've all been brought much needed warm drinks. It's pretty chilly here. Mind you, I'm the only one that's not wearing a coat. I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah Ooh, that's great. You me. <laughs> I know, I thought I'm meant to be the soft one here. <laughs> Something's gone wrong. Two jackets, not a coat. <laughs> a coat's behind the chair. My two coats are behind the chair. <laughs> God, how many layers is that? Anyway, layers is a good thing in this in this environment. Right, let's let's talk about the chasers. Let's start with Conflated's win in the Savile's chase yesterday, really. Obviously, a blue tower was the big defection, and hopefully he'll recover from the bang on the joint he got. Um, it, it was going to be a muddling race on paper. Ken Boy made the running, but how fast is Ken Boy going to go these days? Not that quick, and eventually Jack Kennedy takes up. You can see down here away from the stands, French Dynamite, Franco de Porte, they're all ganging up, getting keen in a three mile chase, really. Jack goes to the front at the eighth, with eight to jump, and let conflate it roll. You get into a brilliant rhythm in the last mile and a half of the race, and with some great jumps, put all of these to the store and kept going really well to win. He's becoming a much easier horse to ride, he's becoming a much more consistent horse. He's been very consistent in the last 12 months to give him his credit. He's earned his place in the Gold Cup. Michael O'Leary said he doesn't really want to come back here to Dublin Racing Festival. He wants to go straight to Cheltenham with him. He'll probably get his way. He usually does get his way in most things <laughs> in life. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's going to be a runner, but look, he's proved he's the best of this bunch. But he probably has a little bit more to find to get up to the top level. I suppose this is how good is this bunch? Yeah, that is the question. And I suppose it was disappointing yesterday when we knew that a blue tired wasn't going to show up and it made obviously life a lot easier for uh, Conflated. But I agree, Jack Henley gave him a beautiful ride. The, the pace wasn't strong early, he let him roll on. Fences have made a man of this lad as well. He was very tricky at the beginning of his career, but he's really grown and developed and uh, matured an awful lot too. And as Ruby said, he's consistent. Like I thought it was a bold move by Gordon when he put him into the Irish Gold Cup last year off the back of a handicap. And I actually thought, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but he proved everyone wrong. Yeah. And uh, he's just shown it's no fluke about it. And, He's shown that he's, uh, you know, he's potential to be in there and he's potential to go for a Gold Cup. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this race holds up. The form of it, maybe just not the strongest. Galvin was disappointing for me. I was, I was going to give him the benefit of the doubt and put that down Royal Run behind him, but he couldn't do that. He was obviously last year's winner, but maybe he's just not top mark this year. What's your take on the strength of that form? I don't know what the race will develop into, but I thought the winner could do no more. Yep. Particularly the way the race developed, and he did a lot of it on his own. I think he's actually just as good following a strong pace as he is when he's making his own. I could see him placing in a Gold Cup. I could see French Dynamite running well in a Reiner. <coughs> Didn't stay. Uh, and I think he's a young, improving horse, trained by a man who loves Cheltenham. Uh, and the rest are disappointing like Ken Boy's fifth run in the Savills chase he's not getting any younger and he, he finished second love that horse would love to own a horse like that but if you're talking about future Cheltenham Gold Cup yeah. winners he's not going to win one so he's not even going to line up how worried should we be about a Pluta do you think you know the travel sickness poor performance in the Betfair chase now banged a joint haven't seen him again of course you're worried I'm a big fan of the horse um, like, you're in no man's land. He has to run at Dublin Racing Festival. We have to see him before Cheltenham. It made me uncomfortable, you know, just another, tar well, not another target miss, but another target miss in the sense that he didn't run well first time and he didn't turn up yesterday. Yeah, it's disappointing, but obviously Connections felt that he was well enough to come here on the day. And obviously, um, he, it was obviously an injury in transit when he did bang his joint. So hopefully he can put that behind him, but the question still remains and there's more questions to be answered really with him. So uh, he really has to show what he's capable of this year. We haven't seen what he's done before, so mm. he really has to bring that to the table. Mm. Ruby, how are you feeling about him? I don't know. I, I hope he's, he's okay. Uh, the fact that he was here would definitely give you some hope that it's nothing more than a bang. And It'll be interesting. I wouldn't be certain he'll, he'll run between now and Cheltenham. He didn't run in the spring last year before he went there. Um, I wouldn't be sure. I'd be surprised if he does run in the Irish Gold Cup. Maybe he'll go to the Kinloch Bray and Turnus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's very where he could go in three weeks' time. But mm -hmm. uh, that's probably where he will go. Okay. race Alaho won. Alaho probably won't make the Kinloch Bray. So I wouldn't be surprised if a blue tar goes there. Interesting shout. King George, what did you make of Brave Man's game? I thought it was a great performance. And I thought the right two horses came to the fore at the end of the race, Don Presley and Brave Man's game. And I think Brave Man's game could have been more impressive even than he was. Look, I said it on the day, and it's a mistake I made. 2005 or six, I wrote strong flow and I felt him and got the wrong side of Bally Cassidy. But Harry Cobden gets the wrong side of Charlie Deutsch here. And you watch where Tom Scudamore is on the outside and on Royal Pagai. You have Harry Cobden in the orange and you have Charlie Deutsch in the green and white on Long Presse. 
but it's between the fourth and fifth fences when Long Presley starts to go left. Look where Royal Pagoy is outside. Royal Pagoy, Brave Man's game, or Long Presley, Brave Man's game. Look where Royal Pagoy has gone. He went in. If Cardi Cobden had gone in when Tom Scudamore went in, I think Brave Man's game could have bolted in in the King George. They talked about him not liking being crowded at Aintree and hence they wanted he to give him He wouldn't have been space. crowded if he went in there. There was enough room to put a double deck of bus between Fro and on and Long Presse. He wasn't going to be crowded in there. If he can't cope with that sort of pressure, he has no chance to go and cope because you can't go around the wide outside like he's trying to do here in Cheltenham with all the turns. But look, the two right horses come to the fore here and they pull away from Fro and on. Royal Pagoy, a high senior, and they went at it down the straight. Obviously, Lon Presse is a better horse going left handed than he is right. I did fancy him, but oh, what's of little faith? How oh, dare you doubt Paul Nichols and the King George? Lisa, the market reacted for the Gold Cup with sort of, well, oh, it's very good for Brave Man's game, but he's not a Gold Cup winner. Whereas Lon Presse, the horse that fell at the last, he is. Is that how you read it? Yeah, uh, like it was obviously disappointing. He didn't deserve to uh, fall at the last, and it was a very impressive uh, performance by Brave Man's game. I, I just think oh, I'm not sure going into the Gold Cup. Like it's it's going to be an interesting race. And um, he was he just popped the last, and obviously you can see here where Ch Charlie Deutsch just got unseated. He nearly sidestepped him. He landed at the back of it and sidestepped, and that's where he came off. But it was a very impressive performance by Brave Man's game at, on, on that day. Um, turning into the Gold Cup in Cheltenham, I'm not so sure. I'm worried about the undulations. I'm not sure the undulations are what he wants. If you look at his campaigning, he's been kept almost exclusively to flat tracks, apart from when Cheltenham has beckoned. Um, and if Cheltenham's beckoning now. Uh, again, well, and it should do, because that was an outstanding performance in the King George. They should try, but I just don't think he, the place is his bag. How about you? Yeah, uh, it was a huge performance from him. I'd say that was the aim from when he was mm. a novice hurdler. Um, I was so frustrated watching it as a Long Presley fan. Why was the winning post at the end of the back straight? It was just, ah. Uh, and like Frodon, you know he jumps left. Get inside him, your horse then started to follow him. He got such a hard race, and then obviously to not even finish the race. Um, I wonder, did he leave his gold cup there? I, I, it just, it was a very, the race fell apart because they went so hard, and Brave Man's game was the only horse they able to sustain it. He came off at around five from home, and it looked like, oh, he came back on the bridle turning in. He didn't, it's a horse, the long press had his race run. And I'd say everything else collapsed. Royal Pagai is a relentless horse. He ended up finishing second, but sure. He ran well. Yeah, he ran really well, but is he going to be there in the Gold Cup? Would he? Well, I wouldn't be banking on it. So, yeah, it was a very good performance for the winner. I think Long Press Day is better than what we saw. Okay. Any other horses in the backwash that you want to mention? James already talked about her horse in your, and maybe switching to hurdles. Yeah, maybe he will. Um, you know, Kenta didn't suit him last year either, so probably hard to, to, to take that blunt uh, a decision on the back of that. Um, I'm not sure, you thought Charlie made too much use of Long Presley? Yes. At every, f even at the fourth or fifth last, he was long and they're sending him and I'm thinking, the winning post is another six furlongs away. I, I know he stays, but you even have to ride a stair to stay. But he was quite aggressive on him in the brand advisory as well, wasn't he? I mean, they were, he, he went forward from quite a long way out. Picked, it run, made, picked it up. Seven, the seven fence mm. in the round advisory and kept the pressure on. Um, I didn't see him riding Long Presley any differently at Kempton to how he had ridden him anywhere else. Only he kept going left. He was slow to his whipping his left hand to try and help him straighten him up. Um, that, it surprised me how much he went to his left because I know he had done at Sandown a little bit and at Ascot, which usually shows it up hugely. Yeah, hugely but yeah. that was much more. It's, it must be the comparative grade, isn't it? It just yeah. costs you so much more if you're doing something like that at that level. It is. When you go to the top level, but like, I think if Charlie slowed down, they were both going to push him. Everyone was they were pushing up. It's just the way King George's are. Yeah. Um, but it's be interesting. I, I think you will get over it. I have no worries about that. It's a long way. I saw different horses have hard races there. Mr Mulligan springs the point above all else, but lots of horses have gruelers in the King George and bounce back to Cheltenham. 12, 10, 11 weeks away. Loads of them. Let's move on to Blue Lord and a really substantial performance back here at Leopardstown. It was, um, and it was a good performance. And he surprised me with the pace he showed. Daryl Jacob rode a Paul O'Shack and Bourgeois. Plenty of pace on here. Like, the gentleman to me is not making it. You know you're going a really strong gallop. And I think that gallop 
ultimately was too much for Shaq and Porcois. I think Captain Guinness ran a, a, a career best, but away from this fence, I wasn't happy with Paul's body language and Shaq and Porcois. His elbows are bent, he's slightly nudging at him, going to the fourth last. Whereas Shaq used to be able to blow the race open, that day has gone for him. And he needs to step up and trip. He was only hanging in there, going to the third last fence, whereas Blue Lord was pulling a roller inside him for Daryl Jacob. And the mistake at the second last when Paul Townham was looking for a jump, because when you're just going as hard as you are, you're looking for something to keep you in the race. He didn't get it, and Blue Lord runs out a good winner. And it was good to see Blue Lord go away on the flat and put a bit of daylight between himself and the others and not just wait in front. A well-run race perhaps helped him settle a bit better. He was still a little bit keen and fighty early on, but he went through this race much better than he did as a novice. Yeah, and I thought he was a little bit keen at Cheltenham for his own good, to mm. be fair. But I was quite impressed with him at uh, Clonmel over two and a half when he uh, or overturned Tornado Flyer. Um, it's interesting to see where he will end up. I thought he was very good the other day. I thought his jumping was really good. Daryl Jacob gave him a lovely ride and timed it really well. But I love the way he pulled away from the rest of them. And I think he really stamped his authority on this grade. But I'm interested to see where he shows up. He's proven himself over two and a half and over two mile now as well, which he has done before. But I'm interested to see where he can show up. What would you do? So, you, I mean, at the start of the season, William Ellis was thinking two miles champion chase. Then after Clonmel, he was thinking, OK, maybe Ryanair. You've got Energa then. <laughs> <laughs> at the Queen Mother Championship, you've got Alaho hopefully in the Ryanair. So whichever way he goes, he's got a, a much vaunted stable companion. What would you do for him for, for the best? Yeah, he's going to face strong opposition no matter where he turns. I think he needs ideal conditions. He wants a bit of a cut in the ground and he also wants a strong pace to aim at. Mm. Like we knew Gentleman Demi would go on the other day. We knew Captain Guinness is another potential front runner. We didn't know Jeremy's Flame might go out and take them all on as well. So that angle, he needs strong pace to aim at over two miles. Um, I don't know, I'd leave it to the man who knows best. <laughs> how about you, Jane? Which way would you go with it? I love how you're not asking Ruby. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask him. Yeah, no, no, don't worry, I will ask him. <laughs> um, I'd say they'll wait till the last hour, but look at what happened you in think? last year's champion <laughs> chase. Look what happened in last year's champion chase. It absolutely fell apart. Fernand Boulsev left in your second last year's champion chase. Um, yeah, I, I'd see him as a two-miler after that performance. I, as a physical, I think he's only furnished now. Mm -hmm. I always had him down as a weak finisher, as a novice hurdler, because, you know, it fell last in the Supreme when he was treading water and different things. But I think he's only just been coming into himself. He's a much better horse. He has a high cruise. He jumps well and quick. He beat a strong fielder. Why, why not? I personally would go two miles with him. What would you do? He looks that way now, but he got badly found out in the article last year. Do you remember, Chatham's a mile seven and a half. Leperstown is two miles, one furlong and a half. Much different track. Um, and he got found out in last year's Arkham. Is that Was that immaturity? You think it's speed? Possibly. Possibly. Um, I thought it was speed. OK. He has pace. He has pace, but he didn't have the tactical turn of foot. And he'll get an end-to-end -end gallop with Al Alaho in the Ryanair, which could suit. Uh, Desert Orchid. Uh, won by Editor De Geet, an early exit, sadly, from Edwardston. Yeah, but look, it was a uh, good performance from, from, from Editor De Geet, but obviously everyone's eyes were on Edwardstone. He dropped in early, Tom Cannon, as he usually does, and Edwardstone, and it was uncharacteristic from him. He just guesses at the ditch away from the stands, and watch when he lands, his, his nose hits the ground, he comes back up. Look at the angle of his body. His shoulder and the horse's body is facing for the hurdle track. His nose is trying to stray in a straight line. And when a horse gets in that position, you're coming off. Yeah. Shift it out from underneath you, and Tom Cannon comes out the side door. It's unlucky. Why did he guess? I don't know. But why does Tom Cannon get so far back? It's now the beauty of fences. He's expecting that horse to clout that and somersault. Fences don't do that to horses anymore, but they do still get rid of jockeys, and a mistake like that costs you. It's probably the, a one revelation in horse racing that has been good. Horses aren't somersaulting for doing that anymore, and it's a better sight, but they are getting rid of the Yeah, it's, mu it's much better for them. Um, he does have a tendency to be low. Yeah, but good too much, yes, you should be. Low on Bray, you've got to live on the edge, Lydia, when you're going at that speed, <laughs> and good too much, yes, you should Editor Dejit just blew them all away here, didn't he, Lisa? Yeah, he was also impressive, and it's lovely to see Gary Moore with another really nice set. Uh, and chaser in the making and uh, I thought he was very very good Niall Hulahan on his on his back as well as a really good relationship with this horse but he jumped out he made all he done the dirt he done the hard done it the hard way and uh, he's pulled well clear of the rest of his rivals made easier by the I suppose departure of Ed yeah. Stone but it was definitely a solid performance you have to take him into account um, but he I think he needs to show that he's capable of of justifying that again yeah I, I doubt it I just he just 
burned them off there, didn't he? And if he finished slowly, everyone else even slower. Mm, I was disappointed with Nuba Negra. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. yeah. 153 editor de Gite, and he's beaten him out of sight. Uh, look, Edward Stone just schooled himself around, and he's honest anyway because he crossed the line in front. But it was uh, just maybe not as informative as we would have liked it to be. If Edward Stone stood up, we'd know a lot more. Yeah, I think the only thing we did learn is that Nuba Negra. I mean, Dan Scott's blamed the ground. I can't have that. The six it's pound penalty. No? It's just, it's just. I don't know. It's the, the horse is gone for me. I just. Does Terry Keats make the champion chase the right race for Blue Lord? He's going to jump and go, and he burns along in front of Terry Keats. He could be the one that turns the champion chase into a staying race. Yes. So. Yes, that's true, and we know that he handles Cheltenham. Yeah. Both courses. And he's going to rock and roll. Yeah. Okay. So, again, that's the open chases. Let's move on to Novice Company. We'll start with San Juan. You predicted that he might well be ridden differently against Phil Dor in the Grade 1. Yeah, well, obviously, it didn't work out in that, and so you have to try something different, and he did drop in. Uh, good, honest gallop here, Visionarian. Hollow games are up there. But this mistake from Phil Dor lands in the middle of the ditch. Novices, but you have to say that had to have cost him whatever chance he had. And he does try and get himself back into a field door. Thought Mark Walsh gave St. Roy a lovely ride. He let it happen in front of him, kept following, pulls him out between the, or going to the last fence, and he eventually goes and wins the grade one. We thought he would do it over hurdles. He never quite managed it. He's gone and done it as a novice chaser. Um, Joe J.P. McManus was delighted. It was Nicky Henderson panicking that J.P. would want to move John Bond out of the article? I wouldn't think so. <laughs> Absolutely not. So what do we learn, Lisa, here from, from San Juan, Phil Doe, and also Hollow Games? Yeah, I, I think we've learned from San Roy that he's actually learned to settle a bit better now. We've seen him get lit, lit up a lot over hurls um, uh, last year and the previous year at times as well. But I'm not sure what to make out of the race. I feel like Phil Doe didn't run to expectation by any means. I know he made that bad mistake down the back, but he doesn't even finish out the race with the gusto that we've seen him finish out races before. I feel like he walked home. Hollow Games was ultimately disappointing. Would you question the form that Visionarian ran so close to St. Roy? I'm not too sure. I don't want to disrespect Visionarian either. Mm -hmm. um, he's a solid horse in his own right, but um, I would have liked to see St. Roy maybe pull a bit clearer. But we've learned that obviously he can settle, he's matured a bit, and maybe fences have made a man of him, like I said about Conflated earlier. But I think we need to see a little bit more of him. I feel like the, I question the level of form of that race, to be honest. Do you feel the same way? I would. Um, Visionarian's definitely a better chaser, and he's a high cruise, and he's a horse that we've all kind of overlooked because we've been looking at the Elliott horses and we've been looking at San Juan. Actually, he finished a good second, so I, would, I could see him running well in a, in a maybe in an article. I don't know if he'd go for that Grand Annual Woody or something else, but um, San Juan is a small horse who actually jumps very well. Mm. Um, he's learned to settle, as Lisa's mentioned. I don't see him winning an article. He got a great ride. Disappointment to the race field door, but he made that bad mistake, it's and that's what horses do. Yeah. yeah, I thought Hollow Games looked a bit slow and maybe needed to go up and trip. Would that be fair? Yeah, and I think that was the feedback too as well. So I, I would ultimately see him maybe uh, stepping up and trip. To be honest, mm. he was oh so good in Navin when we seen him over two mile, but obviously that was just a beginner's chase. Stepping into this level of level of company, you really need to, um, you, you know, he's he's had like his his level of uh, stamina exposed there. Yeah. You were going to say. When you make a mistake at the third last in Leprechaun, like Field Door did, Jack booted him straight back into the race. That's where he doesn't finish. There are certain fences at certain courses you can't miss. When you miss the last ditch in Leprechaun, you have to take back and fill up so you can finish. He put him straight back in the race. That's why he didn't come home. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be at all disappointed with him. Yeah. It's where he made the mistake and then he had to try and stay in the race. I, I just couldn't lie to him. Dysart Dynamo has made his chase debut. It was a race that was all over before the second. It was, yeah. Um, it was all over a long way out, but look, um, he jumped really well. You'd have to be delighted with what Dysart Dynamo did, but as a race, was it a race? No. But I mean, how come he's not done for school in the public? That's all it is. Does that wording have to be changed? I think a few, we've seen that a good few times this year. But look, we know he can jump. He was around Punchstown last week as well. He jumped super, and he's absolutely bolted in. Uh, on a plus, Fence is probably settled him a bit. Yeah, the, the good things, Jane, his jumping was pretty sound and he looked more tractable than he did over hurdles. Yeah, but sure, he had a saunter and nobody took him on and it wasn't exactly a hyper environment the first race here. So I liked the horse last year. What happened in the Supreme happened. Uh, you'd always have that worry now in the back of your head when he gets into the pressure cooker, how he'll, he'll adapt. But he's a big physical, he's, an, he's shown his aptitude, aptitude for fences and 
that's as much as we learned, really. Yeah, it, the, uh, even the clock didn't tell us very much. It was just a, a one-sided contest. What did you think? Yeah, pretty much. He was effective over his fences. That's what he needed to do. And uh, yeah, I thought he was quite good. Um, he pulled away from the rest of them. There was nothing else behind him that was going to take him on, as Jane said. And it was all so simple for him. And um, he done nothing wrong, can't fault him, but he's going to face a lot stronger opposition. Let's discuss the Willie Mullins two mile slash two and a half mile chases. Uh, Ruby's had his, his said his, his thoughts about it, but there's been El Fabiolo and appreciate. I've given an extra syllable there. Yeah. El Fabiolo and appreciate it, and now Dice like Dynamo. How do you see all of those signing up and Samoir as well? Yeah, you nearly forgot the great one winner. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you have to love El Fabiolo. Um, he was such a raw individual last year, and to get from Tramore maiden hurdle to a neck within John Bonnet uh -huh. entry from one run to next was a fairly big ask, and he nearly did it. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd say Munir and Suede be very, very excited about him. Appreciate it. You kind of forget how high he was held, you know, as a supreme novice winner to throw him into a champion hurdle, and now he's. Um, I think this might be his time to actually show us what he's really made of. So the dream is still alive of both of them. Mention for Journey With Me, who beat Flooring, uh, Flaming, Flame Bearer at Nace. Uh, they walked up to the line. I was disappointed with him on his chase debut at Gorn, uh, where we have to mention Classic Getaway. Uh, where will we see him next? That was a very good performance to beat his stable companion, Manila Cocooner. So all of those beginners' chases at the moment in Ireland are like mini grade ones. They're more competitive yes. than some of them. And they are all horses you'd like to have in your yard. There's all of those. There's Mighty Potter as well. How are you seeing all of the, the novice chases at the moment? Yeah, it's going to be an intriguing division, to be fair. It's something I love as well. I love watching the novice chases. Me too. I, I love waiting to see who's going to establish themselves in that top grade. Um, and a lot of them come into, in, into it with big expectations as well. Um, obviously, Mighty Potter for me, he, he tops, tops what we've seen so far. Obviously, he's a grade one winner and uh, he was so good in the Drinmore as well. And I, I feel he's such, as Jane said with a few others, he, he's a big, big horse. He's got so much scope as well and he's only filling into himself. I think he's maturing with time as well. And, uh, I, you know, I can't fault anything he's done. And um, I know at Down Royal, plenty of people questioned his jumping, but he made the run in that day. That wasn't going to suit him. Yeah. He looked a lot better in Fairy House, in the Drinmore against stronger opposition. But yeah, he, for me, he's the pick of them. Obviously, Willie Mullins is a really strong hand. And uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll sit and watch and be intrigued by the whole lot. Yeah, it should be interesting. We'll have more action from the novices later on today. We'll talk about that in a moment. We need to move to Britain and talk about the Wayward Lad. That was won by Boots Hill. A big compliment to John Bon. Yeah, it looks that way. Um, walk on risk with a good old gallop, and Boot Hill eventually comes and runs them down. Now, um, the Harry Skelton gets unseated off the grey horse there, whose name escapes me right now. And fame and fortune, is it fame and fortune? Fortune and glory, fortune and glory. Makes a mistake in the next one. Um, but look, Oak and Risk a really good gallop, and Boot Hill does run him down. But that's exactly what it is, Lydia. It is a compliment to John Bond. Mm. Yeah, and Oak and Risk has, has run well here, Lisa. I thought Jonathan Burt did well to allow him to attack and then come and pick him up late. Yeah, and he jumped well, and obviously, I wonder will he step up and trip? I'm not too sure. He was good here. He can be keen. He travels well. Is he going to want to take on John Bon again? I'm not too sure. We've seen him. We've seen him step up and trip over hurls as well. But I don't know. I was impressed with that, but it didn't blow me away. Um, and he's really going to have to step forward from that. I'm a bit of a Bootle fan, not in comparison to John Bon. I just like the horse quite a lot. It's the right race from though. I'm not sure they, immediately after he was beaten by John Bond, they seem to be accepting we can never beat this horse. After that, they seem to be thinking actually, well, we might have another go, why not? In a better race. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> I, I think he's a decent, I mean, I he think he's a, a horse. decent horse. And they've got loads of experience into him, so that won't be the case for a lot of horses. We have to mention the Faheen and obviously the Caudo Star. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think of Gordon's horse in Limerick? Because I was underestimating him going in. I didn't think he'd beaten a whole pile. And did he, beat, did he enhance his reputation by beating adamantly chosen? Um, look, he's enhanced his reputation because he's got a grade one on the CV, that's for sure, but I'm not too sure. Like, obviously, Adamantly Chosen is a grade three novice winner as well. Um, he was very, he, he probably had a low-key um, campaign over hurls too, so I'm not too sure. I was disappointed with Kilcrush. We've been disappointed very. with plenty of times before as well. I thought he'd done everything he needed to do, but he's going to have to take that step forward. Um, I was impressed with him. I wonder, will he step up and trip? 
I wonder will he go for the three miler I'm, mm. I, I don't know it'd be interesting to see where he goes I know Gordon personally I think Gordon loves to split up his horses and keep them away from each other and uh, try and get as many wins as he can at the Cheltenham Festival but I was impressed by what he'd done thought he jumped really well he slowed up got into got into the roots of the second last made a bit of a mistake at the last but um, that was over a very minimal trip he needs to step up he loves soft ground is he going to get that I'm not too sure yeah, to me, he, Jerry Colum shaped like a stayer. What was your take on oh, him? Absolutely. Maybe? I thought Jordan Gates would give him a great ride. He got authorised art in front of him. Didn't look like there was going to be a whole lot of pace. He was riding arguably the slowest horse, but he gets into a good position and he forces authorised art on. And he up the back, especially in the second circuit, to jump and the two of them went out of jumping. And Jordan managed to turn a slowly run race into a stamina contest. Mm. And that's what won it for Jerry Colum. Mm. He's a rock solid jumper. I agree with Lisa. He wants to go way up and trip. but. I thought Jordan gave him a really good ride. He was able to get one in front of him, push it, make this a stamina contest, and he outstayed the rest. And I think he's only ever going to win by a certain distance. It was the same in Ferry House and his beginners. I can't see this fella going away and winning 15. He just doesn't do it. He pulls up in front. And um, it was workmanlike, but I'd say he's a horse with a hell of a big engine. You asked the question, Jane. What did you think of Jerry Colon? The second and third were eaten by uh, Mighty Potter and the Drinmore. Um, I still don't... He's unbeaten Jerry Colomb, but I'm still not in his camp. Mm. He has to do a bit more, and he's proved he's not ground reliant, and he's not a mudlark. Maybe he's a national hunt chase horse. Could be. Yeah, it could be. I suppose Adam Lee Chesson was coming off of a long break the previous time. It's and like he was ridden to run well. Yes, that's it. Yes, uh, yeah, agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Right, the Corto Star back at Kempton over the course and distance of the King George. I cannot have this form at all. Well, look, most, a lot of them made mistakes, but look. Fair play to Philip Hobbs or whoever decided to put the cheap pieces on Time Hill because he never jumped a ditch at Newbury. This day he did. Janino Bello missed the second. Obviously the skeleton horse, Galia de Cito, or Cito uh, made a few howlers of mistakes. That was on a one-way ticket from early and it was eventually pulled up. But I thought the cheap pieces worked for Time Hill. He came down out of the air to ditches. He was much slicker. McFabulous went a good enough gallop in front, but ultimately he's just outstayed him. But he still has that tendency in him to go high. Because when he gets on his own going to the last, he gives it two feet. I think he looked a bit better, Jane, than he did previously. And maybe he was the cheap pieces made him a little bit better. But this was a run at a glacial pace. It started slowly and it got slower. And they finished so strung out yeah. despite the pace. Uh, I heard after that there was a, was there sun in their eyes down the back? I think there, are some, there were some sun issues. There were some shadows issues, some sun issues. There you was a lot, lot of taking off early Absolutely. landing fences. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They all kept taking off early at the second fence too, and there was no sun, sun shining on that, so I'm not having the sun in camp. I thought the, 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 the point fence. that Jane's making is that not the happy. jumping was raggedy, and so that's what caused the race to fall apart. I assume that's, that's the point you were making. Yeah, yeah. There was, like, obviously a skeleton horse, but Janino Bello could have gone two or three times before he eventually went. Anyway, Time Hill is the grand horse. There was three novice chases run on the 26th of December. Do we think, do I think any of those three will win a grade one in open company? I wouldn't be betting on it. No, I wouldn't either. Lucy, you? No, I, I totally agree. Um, like, Pine Hill was good. Um, we've obviously seen he's, he's got a few jumping issues before. Maybe he's, he's obviously improved with the application of the cheek pieces as well. Um, he's an out-and-out -out stayer, but I'm not too sure. He was good what he'd done the other day. You can't, I, I, I don't want to disrespect him too much now, but he's a good, solid horse in his own right, and he'll probably go and run a, run a really good race, but will he win? I'm not too sure. Okay. Right, we don't have very long left. Very, very quick thoughts, Ruby, about the Neville Hotels, the grade one over, three mi uh, over two miles, five, three miles, three, three miles, miles today. Three miles this afternoon. Step up and trip for Three Stripe Life. Guy de Menil, of course, ran in last year's Irish National and the Brown Advisory. Uh, but Guy de Menil hasn't managed to win a chess. At least Three Stripe Life has. Uh, he made a bad mistake in the Drin Moore and David Russell pulled him up. Um, what they achieved over hurdles, Three Stripe Life probably achieved a little bit more than Guy de Menil over mm, hurdles. Definitely. And um, I think he could. I think he could. I think he could be the one three stripe life. But I do think am I right of Gordon of Henry's? He was jumping brilliantly in Bunstown and he made a mistake with Rachel Blackmore. Then all the fences were bypassed and jumping kept him in it. I think he's way overpriced. But all the jumping there is here in Leppistown and he could run a big race at a big price. Lisa, your take? Yeah, I'm with three stripe life to be honest. Um, 
look, I think the trip's really going to suit him. I think he's always been crying out for a step up in trip as well. He's a really big type of horse and uh, I think he's an out and out stayer. I think that will really suit him today. Obviously, he did make a bad mistake in the Drinmore. He has to get over those, uh, it, not so much jumping issues, but he can't afford to make any, any sort of issue, jumping issue like he did in the Drinmore here today. Um, Gallard de Menil has that bit of experience better than, than Tree Stripe Life, but for me, I, I like him, um, and I think he's always shaped like he has the potential to be a better chaser. Mm. I like Three Strike Life too. That mistake in the Dremel came out of nowhere for me. So we have uh, a general, uh, we have a consensus. We do? Yeah. Which is unusual. <laughs> yeah, I've liked that horse from day one. Um, he ran up behind Pascal Vega a couple of times. He got his just rewards at Aintree. Um, I think Davy Russell has stepped aside now, but they will be lauding him again when he has basically pulled up the horse, not given him a hard race in the yes. Trinmore, and we might see the best of him. I agree with Am I Right? I like that horse. He ran well in the Florida Pearl despite landing in the ditch and making a few notable errors. Uh, I expect better from him. Um, Guy de Menil, for us as analysts, will be very helpful because he's got a high 150s mark. He's got loads of experience. So if he wins, we can gauge. If he finishes second or third, we can kind of know what the form will amount to. OK, well, we'll find out later today what happens in the Neville Hotels. Coming to the end of the show, time to thank Ruby, to thank Lisa and Jane for all of their thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching at home as well. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> The home of jump racing. This is where the magic happens. Feel like a Cheltenham favourite with Paddy Power. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.